Hello everyone, welcome once again and in today's session we are going to discuss about preservation technology. Just to sum up what we have seen in the previous classes, we have discussed about the composition and nutritional quality of seafoods, different major components and micro components and we have also seen the muscle structure in seafoods. And after that, we saw the spoilages and how the spoilage can be assessed in the safe food. And in today's class, we are discussing about the preservation methods and why preservation is important. Uh, because we have seen that fish is a perishable commodity and because it has high moisture content, it has to be preserved so that it does not undergo any spoilage. So fish is more susceptible to spoilage than any other organism or any other animal protein food. So uh, animals, they are generally rich in proteins and compared to the other animals or the terrestrial animals or the higher animals, fish is more susceptible to spoilage and that is because of its uh, uh, distribution of the components and the muscular texture. And to prevent spoilage, uh, the preservation is the most important uh, methodology and we have to adopt some uh, suitable preservative methods to increase the shelf life and it is unavoidable uh, in the case of fish or any animal products where the proteins are rich and without employing the preservation techniques, it's very difficult to extend the shelf life or maintain the nutritional quality. So when we do the preservation, we have to be careful about these two parameters. We are not only extending the shelf life of the product, it is also the nutritional quality that has to be given importance. When we preserve the product, the nutritional quality should not be affected much. So whatever nutrition are there or the nutritional components are there in the original material, it should be retained without much change in the end product. So that is what preservation does. And preservation, by definition, it means keeping the fish in a wholesome condition and fit for human consumption. That is, preservation will extend the shelf life of the product by few days or it can be for months and years. And during this period, there won't be much change in the nutritional quality. So whatever is there in the beginning will be retained in the end also. And at the same time, it will be safe for human consumption. Now, why we adopt preservation? You might have seen cases where fish are captured in bulk amount, that is glut in certain seasons. And even fruits and vegetables, we see glut in certain seasons. And because when in one particular season, when we get large amount of products, there's a necessity to store this. There's a necessity to preserve it so that it is available in the off seasons. That is one reason why we go for preservation. And second reason is distance of farms from market. Whether it is uh, terrestrial like fruits or vegetables or is it uh, fish, it is produced in one place and from there to be brought to the market, it is a longer distance and there's, there are not much uh, transportation facilities or facilities to store the products. So therefore, that is another reason why we go for processing. So if it is produced or harvested in large amount, by the time it reaches to the market, it may undergo spoilage. So if we preserve it, we do lower the temperature or cook it or do some other preservation technique like change uh, do curing or make it pick in, convert it into a pickle or something and uh, you can by the time it reaches to the market it will not be spoiled at least you can maintain the nutritional quality so uh, keeping fish fresh is very important at the same time there should not be any losses to the flavor texture or nutritive value of the product and the weight and digestibility of the product uh, or the flesh should also be maintained so it is preservation from the point of capture that is farm to the fork that is till it reaches to the consumer preservation has to be in order it should be there. Now before we go into the preservation what are the things that we have to consider? First thing is we have to understand the composition of fish. What are the different components that are available in the fish and why we are going to adopt or why we are going to do for a do a preservation. So Unless we know the details about the components, so you have to understand whether the fish is rich in uh, lipids or is it rich in proteins and what, which season you have captured and what changes might have happened in the components. So understanding the composition is very important. Only then they can adopt a particular technique. And next thing is they have to understand why fish undergo spoilage. So what is the reason? For example, we understood that gut or the intestine, it contains a lot of microbes. And similarly, the gills, they contain microbes, the scale contains microbes. So 
These are the places from where the microbes they enter or they start the deterioration. If there is no idea, the person doesn't know that these are the places where microorganisms are there, they will delay the degutting process. So they have to understand where the microorganisms are there and only then they can take the measures to preserve the fish. So if a person knows that intestine contains a lot of bacteria, so he will immediately go for degutting. That means remove the gut so that he can prevent contamination from gut to the muscle. So next third criteria that we have to know is methods and principles of preservation. So when we go for preservation, we cannot randomly adopt any preservation method. We have to understand which preservation method has to be adopted for what kind of product. There are products can be cured or it can be frozen or it can be canned or it can be converted to value added product. We cannot adopt same technique for all kind of food products. So depending upon the nature, the technique has to be selected. And when we select the technique, we have to know in great detail the thorough idea about the processing or the preservation technique needs to be there. To begin with, again, composition is important. This we had already seen in the previous classes. To brief up, moisture is the major component. It contributes to about 60 to 80 percent, which is followed by protein. So again, fish is very rich in protein. It's a chief source of protein. And the other micro components are glycogen, sugar, sugar phosphates nucleotides and uh, the most three important parameters here are moisture, protein and lipid. So these three things are important. They are nutritionally important and they again can easily be deteriorated by the uh, or they can be consumed or they can be acted upon by the microorganisms. So we have to preserve these three things. If we are going to eat fish, it is mainly because it is rich in PUFA or protein. If the protein is deteriorated or it has been eaten up by the microorganisms or the PUFA or polyunsaturated fatty acids, it has been converted to lower fatty acids, then it is of no use. We have to preserve these components. Now, again, this figure, it shows that moisture is the highest percentage. And uh, by removing the moisture, by adopting the suitable preservation method, if we can uh, control the moisture content or the water can be trapped, then we can control the microorganisms. Now, what makes fish different and what are the reasons for spoilage? Fish has high amounts of trimethylamine oxide. This is one reason why it is different. And, but this is the same reason why fish undergo spoilage. TMIO, it is, can be easily acted upon by the microorganisms and again it will be converted to trimethylamine. So that becomes a reason for spoilage. Now fish, it has high amounts of lipid that is polyunsaturated fatty acids, which is nutritionally very important. But then since it has high amounts of unsaturation, it will undergo rancidity. So again, that is the same reason why it is important, the same reason why it undergoes spoilage. Then again, it has low amounts of carbohydrate. Again, that can be another reason for spoilage. Again, because of the high amounts of non-nitrogenous protein, the non-protein nitrogenous compounds, then reduction of uh, pH, then autolysis and bacterial degradation. These all details we had seen in the previous classes also, but these are the reasons why the spoilage starts. So the why fish is important, the same reasons are also uh, important in the case of spoilage also. Now coming to the definition of food preservation or fish preservation. It is a method to extend the shelf life. That is the main important idea behind preservation. Whenever you get a product or whenever a catch is there or something has been harvested, the shelf life has to be extended. It is not necessary that in the same day everything will be consumed. Today you might have uh, harvested 10 kilo of uh, fish and it's not necessary that entire 10 kilo will be utilized today itself. It may be balanced, nobody will purchase it. So it can be taken or it can be sold next day. So if you are going to sell it next day, then you need to extend the shelf life. You cannot sell a spoiled product to the consumer. For there, it comes the importance of preservation. So to extend the shelf life, you need preservation. Then it's not only extending the shelf life, you also improve the quality of the product. Quality, whatever is there in the initial raw material, in the fresh condition, what is present? What are the macro components or what are the micro components? These components, they need to be retained in the final end product. So that is also another aspect. So these two aspects are important in preservation and preservation it is not biology or you cannot say that I know biology I can do preservation. You need to know all the other aspects of science that is it includes physics, it includes chemistry, it includes uh, microbiology, it includes engineering. So all branches of science are important in preservation. Preservation are different types. You have seen conventional preservation methods. The conventional preservation methods include 
scanning, salting. Salting is also called curing. Then we have drying methods. And there was a slight evolution and it was new techniques came into existence and we had freezing and uh, thermal techniques. And again, there were evolutions in the preservation techniques, which includes HPP, which is high pressure processing, microwave processing, ultraviolet UV processing. So many new methods have been developed. Irradiation is yet another method which was developed by Bach. So uh, we have several methods have been developed to preserve the fish. Now we have to understand which method has to be adopted for which kind of fish. Now let's see one by one each. It's a brief description. Chilling. By chilling we mean that the temperature has to be brought down. It is not below zero degree. It is near zero degree. So just by reducing the temperature, that is optimum temperature is 37. You bring it down, you chill it using the ice or ice cold water. And when the temperature comes below or near to zero, enzymatic action can be stopped. So enzymes will not, so thereby you can prevent autolytic uh, degradation and also microbes will not be able to grow or multiply because it is not the optimum condition for them. So by chilling, that is the first method of preservation and very common method, you would have seen that many a times at households and in the local markets, you can see that it is the common method of reducing or of preservation, they immediately chill the product. Now next method is freezing. So this is just a play of temperature. You reduce the temperature. That is the uh, optimum temperature is 37 degree centigrade. That is uh, room temperature. And from room temperature, we are bringing down to the zero degree centigrade or below zero degree centigrade. In freezing, we go below zero degree centigrade and it is lowering of temperature. There are different techniques for freezing. In curing, the water activity is controlled by drying. Uh, it is subjected to solar drying. You can just put it in the direct sun and it will be solar drying or you can use dryers to reduce the water activity. We can also use salts and sugars for osmotic dehydration. Osmotic dehydration is a method of dehydration of controlling the water activity. And in this method, the fruits or vegetables or the test sample, it is soaked in high concentrations of salt or sugar. And uh, since it is high concentration, we can observe osmosis. And the principle behind osmosis is that from higher concentration to lower concentration, movement happens through a semi-permeable membrane. And here this uh, membrane is the fish tissue or the fruit tissue. So this is one method of reducing the water activity. Or else we can reduce uh, some mild heat or we can use some additives to control the water activity. Smoking is yet another method. It is a, a conventional method whereby you can reduce the water activity and we can also same time we can get deposits of bioactive components on the surface of the uh, muscle tissue which will uh, prevent the microbial growth. Then uh, we have another method, MAP, that is modified atmospheric packaging. We are modifying the environment inside the package. It can be active method or it can be passive method. If it is active method, it is controlled the atmosphere inside the uh, or the environment inside the packaging material will be controlled throughout the cold chain or throughout the food chain. It is from the point of production till it reaches to the consumer, it will be under control. There is a break in the chain, it will be immediately uh, noticed or it will be tagged on the food product. So when it reaches to the consumer, consumer can identify if the chain has broken or not. So that is one method. Irradiation is another method where we damage the DNA and cell tissue by the help of gamma radiation. Then we have seen canning and retort pouch packaging which you have seen in detail. So that is yet another method of packaging. Then marination is another method where we add acid and salt and this method is based on fermentation because you reduce the pH. Boiling is another method where heat is used and freeze drying. It's a dehydration method where sublimation is the principle. Now let's see one by one the salting. Uh, salting is a very common or conventional or traditional method of preserving. So in this we use salt, can be dry salting or wet salting. If it is dry salting, the fish is degutted, that is you remove the gut and other unwanted parts and uh, then it is cleaned and uh, the scales and other parts are removed and then it is salted. The fish is packed with the dry salt and uh, there is a higher concentration of salt. The water from the uh, body, it will come out and uh, this liquor will be transferred regularly. So that will not cause any spoilage. And at the same time, we can go for wet brining also or wet salting 
In this, the brine is prepared and fish is kept soaked into it. At regular intervals, the brine has also has to be changed. This is one method and this is a very common method and in the state, we can see that uh, a lot of dry fishes are available. Uh, if it is a smaller fish, we can keep it as such for drying. You don't have to uh, split it up. But if it is a large fish, then we have to split it into two half and then do the salting. So next method of processing is drying. Drying is also one of the conventional methods, a traditional method which we follow regularly. You can see the grandparents being uh, using drying method. Even on the Bombay coast, it is very common to see harpodon, that is Bombay duck being dried. So the fish can be hung by gills and it can be dried in the sun. Uh, usually in earlier times, it was uh, a common practice to spread it on, on the shore and dry the product. But it was understood that it contaminates the product, the fish, the sand and the birds or the other rodents, they pass over the product. So the product gets contaminated, so it is not hygienic. And for that reasons, there are some modifications has been brought. Now solar drying has also come and a lot of dryers have come. There are tray dryers, drum dryers which can be used for uh, drying the process and which are mechanical dryers. Then we have smoking. Smoking is another method and very common in lecture deep. Uh, it is usually the tuna fish which is used for doing the smoking process. Large amounts of uh, tuna is captured in the lecture deep islands and uh, these are subjected to smoking. And the product what is developed is called masmin. So it is more like a cookie which you can have like a snack. And uh, smoking can be of two types that is hot smoking or cold smoking. If it is hot smoking, the temperatures are elevated, it is higher temperature, whereas in cold smoking, it is below 30 degrees centigrade. And during smoking, the deposits of the wood or the smoke produced, it is deposited on the surface of the meat. So uh, th this is the reason why it, it is rich in phenols and other volatile compounds and this uh, prevents the microbial contamination. This, uh, the next process is chilling and in chilling uh, the fish is uh, layered, the alternate layers of ice and fish are placed and uh, the ratio is like 2 is to 1 for fish and 1 is to 1 for shrimps and uh, in this method we can bring down the temperature to 0 or near 0. So that will also extend. So this is uh, you might have seen in local markets and other shopping malls. The next method is freezing. Generally. Uh, we can go for block freezers or we have individually cube frozen products and in block frozen uh, we have the bulk of quantities received there is no demand and suppose uh, you need to pack it immediately then we can go for block freezing and in block freezing we usually use uh, plate freezers and uh, tunnel freezers or IQF uh, that is cryogenic freezers or other different types of uh, freezers are there that can be used for developing individual quick frozen products. Canning we had already seen in the beginning and then session uh, was there on canning and this course is mainly about the canning and uh, the products. Now products uh, we can convert uh, apart from this employing this uh, preservation techniques uh, we can also develop value added products from the fish uh, and we can use spices and other additives to make pickles and ferment it and that also helps in extending the shelf life of the product. So these are some of the preservation methods. We also have novel technologies like high pressure processing, ohmic heating, then microwave preservation. But these methods are under trial, they are under uh, research and uh, they have not been adopted commercially because of the limitations and the expensive uh, maintenance charges and the expensive nature of the uh, system. So we are still continuing with the traditional or the conventional methods of preservation. So to uh, sum up, this session. Today we have seen the importance of preservation and definition of preservation. It's not only to increase the shelf life, it is also to retain the nutritional qualities. We have also seen what are the different conventional preservation techniques that can be adopted for extending the shelf life and uh, retaining the nutritional quality or to preserve the products. There are uh, some novel techniques also to preserve the product but which are not in practice because of the limitations. And uh, why we go for preservation? It is to prevent the spoilage so that it can be made available to the consumers at the right time and in the right way. So with this words, let me conclude for today. Thank you.